Okay, thank you. Thank you for having us here. It's uh, great to see so much people here. Um, short introduction. So we are both uh, software engineers working at IBM uh, Germany. There's a aerial picture of our lab. It's kind of it has its roots in, in mainframe, like everything in IBM. Um, Linux on the mainframe started as a skunk work project there. And now it's missions from quantum to cloud. So, and we are working on IBM Cloud Code Engine, and this is where we're here. It's kind of a, it's based on Knative and provides a, a simple user experience on top of Knative and several other open source uh, products that we're using. So we're providing, um, kind of running your, uh, enable to running your containers in the cloud easily. We have also a batch experience. Uh, we're using Tekton to, uh, to deploy source code into the cloud. So for example, if, we, if you know it from um, Cloud Foundry, we provide a kind of a similar uh, push experience for your source code for your project. So this is kind of a glimpse in the user interface. So the easy pass is just you type your name of your application, you type your container, press create, and your service is running, and you can access it uh, secured via HTTPS in the cloud. I think for this audience, the second thing is probably kind of interesting. You can get a, a cube config using the command shown above. So you can select your project. You're getting a cube um, config. And then you can use the usual tools you're using. So for example, you can then a uh, KN service create and you can run your application in the cloud easily. And for all that, you don't have to care about your clusters at all. You don't see it. You just get this uh, experience by getting your namespace where you can run things on. Um, Code Engine uh, started a while ago went GA in 2020, uh, went better in 20, and GA early 21. And I think we're, we're using now uh, Kinetics in the longer times since 011 and now on 1.6, on, on so we made a long journey with it. And same is for Istio, as you can see, which you use as a service mesh. Uh, started also with 1.5 and now on 1.15. And at the moment, we are also working with some here with the community on getting a Knative Conformance uh, certification running. So uh, since uh, Code Engine is running globally, I think now in nine data centers around the world with lots of users, lots of services, um, we have seen that um, this use case is kind of special. So you don't, get not, you don't see lots of blocks or documentation how to run it in a kind of this high number of services. And also the documentation of uh, running things multi-tenant is um, kind of sparse. So we want to try to, to tell something about the things we learned in running both as aspects, um, the multi-tenant aspect and the, uh, the scaling to the lots of services and share that uh, with the community. And uh, what, what you might can learn on running both those. So I will cover the, the first part, which is it's, um, using Knative in a multi-tenant way. So sharing one cluster with lots of users and avoiding that they interfere with each other too much and uh, better not see the other uh, person's services and data. Uh, I will talk to you about three aspects why we did this. Uh, first is uh, encryp encryption. Then we have some network isolation and also we have to care about the resources we share. Uh, start with the encryption. Um, we decided to use uh, MTLS encryption provided by uh, our service mesh Istio for all connections, for example, from the service to the activator, from the activator uh, to the single service so that um, th the traffic is secured inside the clusters and uh, separate from each other. And um, uh, though 
is the OSL uh, Knative has a number of measures you can choose from. When we started, uh, we had to uh, make a decision because we uh, decided that every customer project has its own certificate. And at that point of time, at least, it narrowed down, uh, narrowed down our choice of service meshes, I think, to one. This was Istio um, supporting that configuration. So if you, uh, we have to configure our gateway configuration. You see here, for example, for one of our services, or one service as an example, we see each of the projects, uh, which is a namespace in uh, Kubernetes uh, language, gets its own certificate. We're using Let's Encrypt there, and we can figure that here in the, in the gateway file. So we have this slides here with this teacher on. This is kind of the lessons learned. Um, we learned on the way, and we might want to share. So this is, though there's a lot of uh, service measures around, your, tech, your um, requirements sometimes limited to a very low number, in our case, at, the, at least at this point of time, to ones. And um, interestingly, we have to look at this uh, definition. So if you have this gateway file, and we have for each namespace we are supporting with one of those sections in, at least it it's somehow gets one of our limitations we have in the cluster because this file, because we have each of these entries repeats the cipher suites and the um, TLS information gets bigger and bigger with each service. And at some point of time, it will um, extend the, the limits of, for example, LCD entry size that you're allowed to do. Luckily for us with one is the 115, uh, Envoy gets uh, same defaults, so we don't have to repeat, uh, we have to repeat much less things. But these are the things you have to look on also, that your, um, your YAML files didn't grow too much and you, can, you are not able to store them anymore. Network. Of course, we have, uh, we put network policies in place um, to shield namespaces from each other. So one customer cannot talk to, um, for example, to pods and services in other namespace. This looked good at the first glance, but then uh, we looked on local Knative services and found out uh, that this whole concept doesn't work anymore because these, this kind of course, like the name says, is cluster local, but not namespace local. This was kind of okay as long as you only provided public accessible services. So there was this public pass anyhow, you can access it, but we also provide a private access part to services from uh, the customer's VPC. And then it gets a real problem that you can access something you're not allowed to do. And um, we worked around that. So I show you uh, actually out of band of Canative and Istio by uh, putting uh, filters into Envoy, which is it's a simplified, to, uh, simplified code here, adds a secret to each outgoing Knative local call. And uh, when we receive that call in the same in the namespace, we check that this uh, added secret uh, is fitting the namespace that it originated from. Um, and of course, we make sure that this is not handed out to the customer and we overwrite it so it's, it's a question. So lessons learned, using network policy is good, but not enough. Last thing I think just will, I think, skip over seeing the time. Um, of course, we have to, if we hand out resources, we have to make sure that um, one customer cannot take the whole cluster. So we're limiting the number of apps you can provide, the number of revisions, because revisions each service resources, IP addresses in the end which are limited. So yeah, we have to uh, limit things um, and make sure that the customers play well with each other. And but you will have some flexibility there to react to customer demands. Um, yes, the last thing we had to do is kind of, uh, we had to massage the things that were created 
Um, I think a good thing to explain is the uh, image pull policy. So, if, of course, the best for us and for the for the uh, speed would be if you could uh, take the image as its own the cluster. You don't have to do any outside call to a registry, but use that image. But it's actually a bad idea in the security problem because the customer, another customer on the, cost, on the, on the cluster, could uh, kind of guess the name of a customer, the image of another customer, and there would be no authentication, and could they just could use that image. So we massage every uh, image pull policy to always, which is not as bad as it sounds because it doesn't actually pull that image if it's, if it's already there, but only does the authentication part with the registry. So, and there's work going on in the, uh, the uh, community or, uh, to enhance that part. Um, th so this is always, this, there's some security checks on the image pull. This is driven by the IBM OSS folks. And uh, I can skip over that. Also, I think taints and tolerations we, we also have to somehow control. So lessons learned: um, image pull policy, if not present, is fast but uh, security problem. Good thing is always what we really use is the that Knative really provides a fine grained control uh, by uh, by this capability settings you can do, which helps us a lot. Yeah controlling something, some aspects of Knative. And with that, I'm through the multi-tenant part, and Norma will take the scaling section. Thank you, Martin. Yeah, uh, que maybe questions to that part, maybe. Yeah, th uh, first of all, thank you for the insights that you gave us. Um, one question more, an, um, yeah, high-level question. Would, uh, would this be also possible for any Kubernetes uh, Knative installation? So like the, the recipe, how to set up network policies, and also this extra Envoy filter, this is something that would be helpful for, for the whole community? Because I'm asking whether it m might make sense to add this to the documentation or write a blog post around that. So. Yes, definitely, it would make sense. Well, yeah, we, I think we have some blog posts out in mm -hmm. the world about uh, the setup. Um, not sure whether we covered this network policy already, uh, but it might be a good thing to do. Because this is asking also we get yeah. often, and uh, it would be super awesome if we find some mm -hmm. yes. common solution for that. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Norman. Okay, thank you, Martin. So after we've secured our uh, tenants and they are isolated from each other, the next thing we will want to do is to actually scale up. So I want to give you some insights on what we do, what we change in the Knative configuration or how we configure Knative to scale to the level we are currently at, which is multiple thousand services per, per cluster. And the things I want to talk about are basically three. The cold start time. So as you've seen, we are using Istio as a service mesh, which comes with overhead on top. And we want to get that down as much as possible. And also some particular configuration information for Knative and the special section for Knative plus Istio, what you may need to be mindful of when you use Istio with Knative and how to get the cluster to a sufficient size. So for the cold start time, there are basically two, two things with Istio. Uh, we can obviously pre-pull all sidecar images out of band to get basically pre-warm all nodes we have so that the image does not, the sidecar images for Istio proxy and queue proxy, proxy, which we need, do not need to be pulled extra on each node when scaling up. But that's actually not the bigger overhead. The, the second part is the mesh tuning. So most of the overhead when scaling up with running with Istio is getting the service information to all parts when scaling up. And this will be most of the overhead you have when uh, scaling up a service from zero to one instance. And this is where you can basically configure Istio in a way 
which I come to in the separate section at the end on what you need to look out for. We also experimented with Istio in a traditional way so that the Istio proxy, which runs as a sidecar, is configuring the IP tables as a networking layer and basically run it against uh, or performance tested it against the Istio CNI plugin, but there was no noticeable difference in start cold, cold start time. The only thing that mattered in the end was the mesh tuning with getting the push, in, the discovery information for the services as quickly as possible to the activator that is in the path and to the service endpoint. Yeah, this is uh, the lesson uh, thereof, the minor overhead of the actual sidecar image pulling. Both images are pretty are pulled pretty quickly. And even if you do use the CNI plugin and configure the IP tables not in the actual init container of a spawned Knative application or Knative service, it, it does not matter in the end for the cold start time. What matters is the Istio state synchronization that needs to happen. So the Istio control plane needs to get the information what the activator needs to know, what the Knative service needs to know, and needs to push it there. And the receiving end needs to actually be able to get that in time and set it up. Otherwise, you will see a lot of errors when scaling up or scaling down. So from a pure Knative perspective, we deactivate the HPA for the activator. Why? We saw that when we have the activator HPA enabled, what will happen is dynamically, if it's necessary, the activator instances will spin up or down, depending on need. And what will then happen is the activator service will be changed. And the endpoints for all services in the cluster will be changed, which means Istio needs to pick up all that information and send it out again, which is a huge pain that we need to avoid at all costs. That's why we have for our clusters basically a static configuration for the activator at least to limit the scaling or the changing of the activator service as much as possible. So to not uh, overwhelm our cluster with Istio service synchronization information. The second thing is, you see there we are using proxy mode so we have the activator for all services in our cluster always in path. It will never be taken out because that again will trigger Istio to need to push more information. And the one thing Istio currently only does, it only pushes state of the world information, not a delta. So even if one service in your cluster changes, it will not send one service. If that service is visible by other services, it will send every cluster every information to that service, which is a lot of information. Yeah, then uh, we added an HA setup for all the Knative components so that we have run multiple and different availability zones to be HA with the, that's not currently in the current Knative defaults. Then another thing to maybe be mindful of, the queue sidecar size is defaulted in Knative. And when you have, as Martin told, uh, multiple tenants that have different resource quotas and can adjust those or request for adjust, this might have an impact on the queue sidecar if you don't pin it to something th specific or make it tied to the size of the service itself. Then the Kubernetes API calls that the controller does, there are two things. The one is you need to increase if you want to scale the QPS and burst. They are set pretty low and you should increase it to a sufficient amount. And what's currently not possible is the controller, we gave them with our patching more worker threads and we currently have an issue open for discussion if that should be included in Knative because the controller will get a pretty big queue when resyncing and that might, be a, might cause some hiccup in service provisioning times and revision creation. In addition to that, we don't want to only auto-scale pods or auto-scale Knative services for our customers. We are also using a standard cluster auto-scaler with a provisioning feature on top of it. 
to basically order nodes ahead of time based on workload demand we anticipate and then pre-warm all those nodes that we can get Knative services on that up as quickly as possible. Yeah, and these are basically, uh, as summarized again, the lessons learned we had. We want to avoid the state syncing for Knative that's based when, we, when the activator instances change. Then we increase the API limits. And one future item is we noticed that Knative is doing a lot of API calls and we noticed at least some of them seem to be unnecessary. For example, we have an issue, you will see it in the references section if you want to discuss or take part in the discussion where Knative tries to update all the deployments in the cluster when resyncing, even though nothing changes and all that takes time. And if you have constant monitoring on your cluster, you will see those resyncs basically as increases in a lot of cold start time and provisioning times. Coming to the, the Istio section, I think, what was it, Knative 1.4 that supported mesh mode? So we don't want to, or we don't have pod addressability, so we always run with mesh mode enabled to basically stop from the defaulting behavior that was present where first Knative tried to go directly to the pod and then defaulted back to the cluster IP. So we're running with mesh mode. And as already mentioned, the proxy mode we run in, so the activator is always in path to avoid resyncs on Knative and Istio size. If that's not present, what we saw when scaling up further and further is basically 503s, a lot of them. If you take the activator back in path when it was out again, the activator needs to have service information. For that service, it's going to be in path for, and if that's not present at that time, Knative switches the endpoint, but Istio does not have did not send the correct information yet, the user will see 503s on their end. And we want to avoid that. Another thing is, this is just the, the standard of Knative uh, artifacts. When we have a service, a configuration, and basically a route, and the route routes traffic to different revisions. And when we have revisions, what will be created by Knative are two services, two cube services a public one and a private one. And they always look like that. It's not configurable. And this is for an active revision. And at least part of that is always necessary. What will also happen is if you have users that create multiple revisions, create a new revision, use traffic management, you will have multiple revisions. And more importantly, sometimes you get to non-active revisions. There are defaults where they are retained for some amount of time or you can pin it to a maximum. But for a non-active revision, Knative keeps all artifacts in place. There is a deployment, there is a replica set, there's a port autoscaler, there's a serverless service, and there are those two cube services. Istio does not know that those are not active and that those are not routable. Istio will send those informations with every push, even though this is not necessary. So to come to the last part, we want to reduce Istio mesh synchronization because that takes up a huge amount of CPU and causes all the delays in cold start time. And for that, as just saw the Knative garbage collection, we also limited it to maximum one non-active revision per customer, so or per app. So the app or the Knative service can only have one non-active revision. This gives each user some kind of safety net to go back if any, anything goes wrong, but it prevents us from having all those services lying around that are not actively routed because we don't want to send that information out. And Istio supports basically a lot of features I want to concentrate on too. And this is the mesh debounce where you can specify amounts of time on how often Istio pushes and how to aggregate pushes so that you don't overwhelm all your receivers in the cluster because the issue control plane does nothing else but push and the receivers have to actually handle network. So the issue control plane will likely win and overwhelm the receivers with a lot of pushes and we want to avoid those at all cost. Yeah, and that's the summary of that to limit the Knative garbage collection or at least if you're scaling the cluster, be mindful 
when running with Istio, what the impact of having non-active revisions will be, and to keep an eye on Istio settings, especially for debounce. Debounce after means every push will be delayed by that amount of time. That will have a direct impact on provisioning time, on revision creation, and debounce maxes how long to keep aggregating pushes until you finally send it out. And as a future, Istio does have something in plan to support Delta the pushes that Envoy already supports to get rid of all this unnecessary synchronization effort. Uh, yeah. Short outlook from our side. For a Knative means we want to support custom domains. We currently do, but not via Knative. And we want to switch to the Knative support of custom domains. We also want to support the proxy, proxy protocol together with Istio for enhanced audit, auditability. And we want to adopt the Delta pushes once available. And with that, I want to thank well, the rest of our team and especially our open technology and developer advocacy team that is doing most of our contributions to Knative. You all know Max, Paul, and Angelo. We are mostly from the operation side and we want to thank the rest of the community for all their contributions and to highlight from all the components you've seen in the beginning that Martin showed you, Knative is the center part and you saw the size was, it's basically the centerpiece of everything together with Istio and the, yeah, the upgrade experience and the stability for Knative is, is good. It's better than most of the other components we use and I want to thank the community for that. Thank you. It warms my heart to hear that. Yep, there are questions. Do, do we have time for, okay, yeah. yeah. I have a question. Um, have you experienced any size limitations besides those that you have seen? Like for example, the maximum number of services that you can deploy on a single cluster? I, I'm asking because for example, IP, IP tables have a, a size limit. And if you say that a lot of services are, are not used anymore, they all still populate these, these kind of uh, um, data. And I, I wonder whether you have, have seen some ceiling in, with respect to the number of objects that you can deploy on a single cluster. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Actually, I think we didn't uh, hit a hard limit somewhere yet. I think we, we knew, I think the, the, the nearest thing actually was this gateway configuration. We knew that at some point of time uh, will at least force us to do something on the database side to, to restore it. Yeah, but, yeah, I think our experience is that we are kind of, uh, we have a kind of a uh, ongoing fight with, with the service mesh to get the data around and connected to that is also th this um, marshalling, unmarshalling of this, uh, this information center around. It's, it's astonishingly CPU and memory intensive. So you have to uh, also cater for that here. So your default sizes will not be enough. If you, uh, if you hit it, but we have one, I think we don't have any hard numbers where, where the end is. I was, I was just gonna say, great, great presentation. I just had two questions. So with the limits with Istio there, um, I guess, how do you guys handle rollouts where you're doing upgrades to Istio, potentially still running thousands of workloads that could be in flight when you have to do the rollout of those? The second thing is with the chatter of Istio with XDS, so obviously you've had to fine tune that. Would that chatter be like reduced significantly with ambient mesh when that comes out, that capability rather than running sidecars everywhere? So I guess that, yeah, that just those two questions. Yeah, upgrade experience. So we do upgrade the whole cluster in flight. This is working. Uh, we have had to uh, expressly massage the Istio installation to not delete the, some important things. <laughs> so, so you have to be careful what you're doing there because we, I think we, we are able to update the old cluster in flight. So no downtime for that. Ambient meshes is the thing I think we will look in because it's exactly, uh, I think not for this sync problem, but for the, for the resources used in the cluster. So if much less sidecars that you have to care for. And so it would be uh, in the end less, less expensive to, to run the whole system. Yeah, but the ambient mesh even with that, the control plane 
still stays the same if not using delta and it still needs to send all that information so it will maybe help but probably not solve all of the problems we uh, see so far this is a quick question so you mentioned that a lot of your work is focused on getting reducing what istio is pushing out and reducing the number of activation sticks what sort of trade-off are you making by doing that is there some part of the experience of using Knative that you lose by trying to like prevent Istio from sending out all that data? So it can hit the cold start time. That will, you need to find a balance between cold start time, provisioning time, and serve, uh, or creating a new revision or updating your service because those times will take a hit if you try to reduce what Istio needs to sync. So depending on how many services you have in your cluster, what rate of changes or how many services are provisioned per minute per second, and how many cold starts you have, you need to find a balance. But yeah, there will be a trade-off made. If I can add one more bit to that, um, they turned off a bunch of the auto scaling and things that are efficiency gains to avoid Istio stealing all of that back by you know having to do an xds sync so they turned off auto scaling on the activator and they turned off taking the activator out of the path when you get a big you know when you get a service that's getting a thousand requests per second or something like that the activator will still be in the path so um, i'd say that resource resource efficiency in some cases they've yeah. had to sacrifice in order to Exactly. That's the trade we're making that we have. This costs us, of course, to, to have these resources available uh, to handle the, the traffic we have and the, uh, the information we have and the marshalling uh, we do. So this is uh, the cost we pay. Uh, um, one, one more question. Um, in terms of uh, advice of uh, running this large cluster, are you running one single large cluster with all the customers in one region or are you sharding and having multiple clusters maybe some advice yeah. for people that want to run at this scale yeah actually we have a, a sharding solution behind but of course uh, to to reduce the overhead the cluster having sorting cluster has an overhead of the having a control plane and management component on that uh, we try to use the clusters we have as much as possible um, so this is still a, a thing to to get um, um, as most as possible uh, effective running those clusters, uh, but we have a sharding concept to kind of adapt to growth and customer uh, numbers that we that we have. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much.